At this point, things were finally rolling along nicely. We were able to get into a framing groove with the wife cutting studs and fire brakes while I tacked it all together. We did discover that even though I used to be a framer, my wife is actually way better at measuring and cutting lumber. I have never seen such precision. It must have something to do with patience or something. I guess we will never know. So to explain the method to our madness here, we decided to frame the house in a balloon framing style, which in short basically means building the exterior walls first, then tying in the interior walls using notched studs to support a ledger or ribbon as it's sometimes called to support the upper floor joists. It'll make more sense when you see it later in the video. Oh man, two by six walls are heavy. So we got double door, double door, big bay window. It's gonna be dope. Okay, so with most of the walls done, we decided to switch gears and move our wood stove into the house before finishing all of the walls. That way, we don't have to move this hunk of iron through a doorway. So, I'm going to, once I get out of the tailgate, it is technical talk for tip over. You're not funny. Okay, here we go. You're gonna break your window. I know. So here is our stove. A neighbor of ours gifted us this stove, which was very kind of him. And uh, it's uh, whatever that is. Volkelzang. Oh my. Well, no dead bodies yet. Anyhow. Eh. One thing I should explain here is that we have the rope tied through the eyelet rings of the truck bed. So, yeah. Okay, stop, stop. Ah, there it goes, we got it. Sweet! <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna tip it up. Well, actually, no, where's the drag? I forgot. Drag it on the boot forward, so we can let go of the rope now. It ain't going anywhere. Well, that was kind of overkill 9,000. Ready? 
Gotta go full speed. Go. Man, that works like a charm. That was genius, Dave. Good job. I'm a smart failer. Okay. I'll probably take that off now. Yeah. Good thing. Stuck on. Damn it. Fucking heavy. That slack. Go ahead. Wrong uh, way. So with the walls up finally and the stove inside the house, it was time to start bringing in the supports for the roof, and in this case we decided on exposed timber posts that would support a double 2x10 beam across the midsection of the house. Alrighty, so today we are pulling up timbers for the post supports for the main beam that goes across to support the roof trusses. And the trusses will be going down like this way basically, uh, shed roof style. But because they're green and incredibly heavy, I devised this jerry-rigged uh, freaking crane support doohickey thingy with some rope and then the winch up there attached to the truck. Um, I didn't want to put any lateral force on the foundation because, well, I just don't trust it. So, it's all downward force through the ladder with the rope going over the edge here. And you can see we got some timbers here. I need three more of these. And I need three more for the actual beam up top. So, anyway, here we go. Which I probably should have put on first, but you know, I just fly by the seat of my pants. <laughs> Now that all the logs have been moved into the house, I had to strip off all the bark and clean them up. We wanted to get them as bare as possible to expose the blue stained sapwood, which is caused from a fungus carried by the mountain pine beetle, which is endemic to the Rocky Mountains. We figured we'd try to use these infected trees first, not just for the look, but because they're also destined to die before their due time anyway. Ah, man, this is gonna suck. Here we go. With the posts all prettied up, it was time to hoist them up into the vertical position using the old meat tractor, aka me. Then once I had them up in the position, I secured them to the king stud using 11 inch lag screws. This way I wouldn't have to worry about any displacement when I started to mount the beams. So, I think I mentioned it before, but anyway, there's gonna be four of those, and then two in the middle, and then another one over there, and then I'm gonna have the main roof beam come across. And I was gonna do logs, but because of time, and winter is coming, that uh, I just did engineer two by tens, blue lamb beam, so yeah, I'm cheating. But hey, it'll get shit done quicker.
Well, that didn't work. Dang it! So securing the beams into place was not as bad as expected, despite my slippery fingers. After that, we quickly moved on to setting the 2x8 roof rafters and the lateral purlins, which are these things. We really had to start picking up the pace since by this time it was September, and up here it's entirely likely that snow could come at any point. So we really haven't gotten much footage in the last week because uh, to make this challenge harder, the universe got us sick. We don't know really what we caught, but uh, I mean, we're both vaccinated, so we figured it wasn't COVID, but eh, you know, who knows. Either way, we got it done. So as soon as I was, the day after I was feeling better, we decided to push through and we got all the uh, lateral purlins up and uh, started OSBing, well, started OSBing. We still gotta finish that crap. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. So, uh, gotta hurry before winter. <laughs> I see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. Today, we are getting the OSB up. And as you see, 16 foot wall is kind of a pain in the butt. But the missus over here had a good idea to use a pulley with a little uh, grip handle doohickey down yonder to pull the sheets up and then we tack it in from the top. So. And it just so happens we're having winds of like 35 miles an hour, so yeah, it just makes it that much more challenging. But anywho, here we go. Tie up the OSB today and uh, order the roof, and we're gonna get the stove in the hole that I made in the roof. Get that set up, and uh, yeah, it's coming, coming slowly. So the tour so far, I'll take you guys on. Oh, we still don't have a walkway yet, and this is our makeshift bridge to the door. So anywho, all right. So this is the interior so far. We got all the windows cut out. She's cutting OSB. Here's our windows. And uh, yeah, we're coming along. I still have to do mortise and tenon type uh, braces for the um, logs, beam, post, doohickeys, exposed timbers, and uh, yeah. But it's coming along. We actually might finish before winter. So, and then here's the stove, which we're we got all the parts. We're gonna do a double flue, six inch interior with an eight inch outer wrap. So it's kind of help with the heat dispersion. So with the OSB completed and the house fully sheathed in, we quickly installed the stove chimney and got the throwing the roof together before any more windstorms, since calm days up here are rare. I'm about to run them off because uh, kind of need to. There you go, Moosey Moose. Don't go, ah, uh, shit. Dude, they walk like, holy shit, it's so big. It's so big. Wow. At this point, we were almost done. Five months in, and it finally felt like everything was coming together. Now it was on to hanging a few more windows, which, as you see, was no easy feat, considering they were close to 200 pounds. But thanks to out-of-the-box thinking and my wife's rigging skills, we pushed through once again. Okay, I just walk up with this fucker. Let's find out. Shit. Let's move this ladder over there. Okay. Got it. Alright, all the way get your foot in there. Ready? Yep. Go slow. Real fucking slow. Fucking heavy. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank God. Oh, it's good that even with the throw. Oh, thank God. 
Nah, I burst my blood pressure. I gotta raise the ladder. Next step in the project, water tank and plumbing. So, as you can see, I kind of started already. Here's the beginning of the trench to go whoop underneath and then I have it plumbed up in the middle to the wall. Technically the frost line up here is 48 inches, but that's gonna be hard to do. So, anywho, here's the tank hole. Now this thing isn't ready to go underground, so, I'm building a uh, more or less a shoring structure to keep the soil from collapsing in on it. And I'm just gonna use pallets. Cause I mean, these are all concrete pallets so they can support some weight and I'll tie them all together and then just fill in accordingly. So we'll see if it works. I don't know, but shit's free. So it's gonna happen. This is why it's so crazy up here. It's storming. Yet the sun's peeking through the valley and it's just casting the most crazy light. It's just beautiful. Damn. Okay, so it's been a while since I filmed because I'm bad at uh, remembering to record shit, especially when you're on a time crunch. But uh, anyway, so far we've got plumbing halfway done. I ran out of parts, so I gotta get some more. All the doors and windows are in, which thank God, because the hornets and wasps up here in the fall are ridiculous and yeah we're well on our way so just got to get more plumbing crap and finish that and then right now i'm working on the crapper the john the toilet putting new implements in so yeah it's coming along Well folks, this concludes part three of our off-grid house build. On the next segment, winter finally arrives and you will see us trying to hurry along to finish. We still got more to do, but I hope you all enjoyed watching and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on another episode of Just a Little Off-Grid.